Welcome back. As we continue to look at some of the arguments for developing and maintaining a good reading habit found in Kelly Gallagher's book, Reading Reasons. Last time we talked about the basic idea that reading is rewarding. Today we're looking at reason number two, reading builds a mature vocabulary. While this may seem fairly obvious, the truth requires some understanding of the difference between the way language tends to be not so much learned as simply acquired. Language is one of the greatest accomplishments of humankind and also one of the most complex. A student might learn a couple hundred new terms each year in science or math classes, which is great, but such learning pales when compared to the way we build a language base all on our own with almost no direct instruction. By the time students enter first grade, they typically use a vocabulary of around 2,500 words in speaking and will comprehend up to 25,000 words. And remember, this says nothing about also acquiring rules of syntax and conjugation, for example. Exactly how we master something so large and so complex still remains largely a mystery but a few key points have come to be well understood over the years. Stephen Krashen, perhaps the leading linguistic scholar over the past 40 years, frequently cites several requisite elements that must be present for language acquisition to occur. First, the language needs to be communicative. Second, there is a zone of proximal development where the material cannot be too difficult or advanced. Language is most often acquired in baby steps, not by trying to make progress in huge leaps and bounds. Third, the student must be motivated without too much of what is called an effective filter, an actual resistance to learning new elements or features of a language. Krashen has further argued that in vocabulary development, words need to be encountered in context, and the learner should ideally already be familiar with nearly 98% of the words encountered with the new vocabulary. This happens naturally when students read good books appropriate to their level of ability. Most readers enjoy some challenge and aren't likely to consistently read books with no new words. Sure, we all might take a break to scarf down an easy reader now and then, but the most engaging books like the most engaging conversations, are those that bring us new ideas, new information, and new words. Traditional education tends to favor the notion of front-loading vocabulary, and I'm not opposed to exercises designed to introduce new important words, but in trying to stretch a student's vocabulary from 20,000 to the 50,000 words that one hopes for in a graduating high school student, you can't depend on 10 or 20 words taught largely in isolation each week. The best way for students to experience the amount of language they need is with extensive amounts of reading. Do they need to have all the new vocabulary front-loaded to master the new words they'll find? Probably not. Readers of Harry Potter can explain the difference between a beater and the golden snitch in a game of Quidditch, but did they do a series of exercises to learn this vocabulary before reading the book? I don't think so. If they did, they likely wouldn't have enjoyed the series nearly as much. That type of exercise can actually increase the effective filter and decrease the chance for language acquisition to occur. But teachers love vocabulary lessons. They're easy to assign, easy to teach, and easy to assess. They don't take up too much time in the classroom, and everyone looks like they're doing education. But how much bang for the buck does one get? A few hundred words a year if those words are actually integrated into the student's vocabulary. Yet learning words in isolation usually gives a flawed understanding of how the word is actually used at best, and they may not be retained much beyond the time required to pass the week's vocabulary quiz anyway. Remember, students need to encounter words in context as they are used naturally as part of the language. How can they find such words? through reading. Do they need to study arcane works of classic literature or highbrow academic articles to stretch their vocabulary? Here's a list of words that might be reasonably challenging for many of my 14-year-old ELA 1 CP high school freshmen. Islet, inconsequential, omnipresent, compelled, exiled, vigorous, spasm, erratic, verbose, permeable, scanty, gruffly, stipulation, dejectedly, humiliating, Communal, sallow, translucent, pallid, and niche. Where did I find these words? They were drawn from the first 10 pages of Twilight. Would I teach them before a student would be allowed to attempt to read this book? No. Would the student be able to comprehend the story? Probably. Would they have all of these words completely mastered? Probably not. We need, all of us, to encounter words repeatedly before they truly become part of our working vocabulary. But they would have been exposed to them and would be beginning to develop a general sense of the word's meaning in a much truer and richer way than if they were to try memorizing dictionary definitions for each of the words. Think of words you've acquired over the last few years without direct instruction, and equally important, new meanings and definitions for words you already knew. What does it mean to like this video, for example, or to Google for information? Have you shared a selfie lately or do you despise them? One way or the other, it's unlikely you don't know what the word means, but I doubt whether any teacher ever wrote it on a whiteboard for you to memorize. We do learn words in conversation, but conversation tends to be, well, 
conversational. We occasionally get involved in deeper discussions with intellectual subjects that might stretch our vocabulary, but extensive reading is a much more reliable method to dependably enrich our vocabulary. So there you have it, Kelly Gallagher's reason number two for reading. It helps build a more mature vocabulary. So keep reading. Until next time, don't forget to be awesome.